This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on how to use roles in Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you the basics of working with roles in the timeline. So let's start with the definition. Roles allow us to label and organize clips. Now just think about that for a second. Roles allow us to label and organize clips. They're an organizational tool. A role is a category. It's a metadata label that's applied to every clip in a library. Roles are automatically assigned to each clip during import. Roles can be modified at any time after import in the browser, in the inspector, or in the timeline. And roles and subroles can be created, renamed, and colored as needed. I want to change gears and show the real power of roles, which is inside the timeline index. If I go to the timeline index and click roles, notice I've only got three. I've got a bunch of dialogue, I've got some sound effects, and I've got music. Notice inside the timeline index, when you select the roles tab, if I uncheck dialogue, all of my dialogue is muted. I can now hear just the effects and just the music. Or maybe I don't want to be overwhelmed with the effects. I just want to hear the music and make sure the timing works with the dialogue. Let's imagine that I've got 50 effects clips here. I've now turned off, muted all of them with a single mouse click, and I bring them back with a single mouse click. Or I want to hear the music only. Now, I've only got one clip here, which is dead easy, and it's easy to illustrate. But think of the projects that you create and how many clips would be in each one of these categories and how quickly you can turn them off or turn them on. Well, here's another thing. Have you ever wanted to sync the music so that a music clip starts at a particular line of dialogue and you've got five or six layers of sound effects? It's hard to see. Grab the, the roll here and drag it up. I've now changed the stacking order so that the dialogue, which is inside the primary storyline, is now next to music, or change the stacking order of dragging effects up. If I click on effects, all the effects clips are highlighted so I can see them throughout my entire project, or highlight just the music, or highlight just the dialogue, and let's turn the dialogue back on so I can hear it. This ability to use the timeline index and roles to change the stacking order so I can put effects next to the primary storyline or music next to the primary storyline means that even a vertically challenging project where I've got lots of layers can be shuffled around to make it a whole lot more organized using the timeline index. Well, this is a really simple project. Let's work with something a bit more complex. And here, I have a project which has got titles and multiple layers of dialogue and multiple layers of music and multiple layers of effects. Now, this is not a feature film by any means. A feature is going to have even more of everything. But it's enough complexity that I can use this to share the real power that roles provide. And notice that I have a title called Reconciliation. This is actually a 30-second public service announcement, or commercial, or social media video. I mean, figure out the distribution source of your type. And the client has asked you to create, say, two versions, or three, or six. One for French, one for Spanish, one for English. But it's the same underlying video, it's just that the titles change language, and maybe some of the narration. So I've got narration in English and Spanish. I've got titles in English and Spanish. Well, you know as well as I do that as soon as you start to have multiple projects, changes you make to one just don't ripple to the other. You just forget. You get distracted. Or you make five changes and you only remember four of them when you go to the next project. And suddenly the two of them are out of sync and you're wasting time at the deadline trying to figure out how to get them to match. It's a mess. Watch what happens with roles. Here I have two titles, English and Spanish. If I go over to the timeline index in the roles category and expand the timeline index, I can turn off my English titles and turn on my Spanish titles. I've deactivated English and activated Spanish. Let's take a look at the end. There is Spanish and there's English. It's the same project. 
and I'm using multiple titles in multiple languages and allowing myself to switch between them. We can do the same thing with captions. We talked about this a little bit ago. Captions can have roles assigned. So inside the same project, I can have English and French and German and Spanish. And just by toggling the role on and off and determine which language my captions are going to be in. This single switch controlling a batch of clips to toggle, say, between languages is really cool. But it goes farther than that. Let's switch to Spanish. So we're in Spanish right now. And let's go down to Dialog. And inside Dialog, remember I click on it to highlight it, all of my Dialog clips are highlighted. Wouldn't it be cool if I could, if I could group all of my Dialog into a category? Well, that's what this button does. It creates what's called an audio lane. All of my Dialog is now grouped together and essentially separated from the video so I can clearly see my split edits. I can see that I've got different languages here. I can see that because if I go back to the clip appearance button and turn on clip rolls, now I can see that I've got Spanish and English clips. Well, except wouldn't it be nice if I could see exactly which clips were English and which clips were Spanish? Well, that's what this button does. This shows sub roles. It now divides my dialog into English, see the dotted line, and below the dotted line is Spanish. So I can see where my Spanish language is and I can adjust my trims or I can see where my, my English is. I don't want to hear the Spanish. I just want to hear the English so I can proof this. Turn off Spanish. All my Spanish clips are now muted. I want to mute the English so I can hear the Spanish, turn off the English, and now I can hear Spanish. And I've got a couple of general presence, which is the sound of the wind as the car drives up, and she walks to the door, and as the car drives away, if I don't want that, I can turn that off, and now I've, I'm looking just at the Spanish dialogue, or I've got some sync sound, which is natural sound, or I can have English. Well, except I've got all this other stuff down here. It's just too confusing. I can't deal with, it's just the stress levels going up. So I click the focus button and it takes all the other tracks and turns them into a thick line. I haven't changed levels. I haven't changed settings. I haven't deleted the audio. I've just changed the display so it doesn't take a whole lot of vertical real estate. So these buttons allow me to say mute all dialogue or mute just portions of the dialogue based upon how you've defined sub roles or make the rest of my clips very thin. It's called turning on focus or show me the sub roles, group them. Notice how when this is turned on, I get groups of sub roles, English, Spanish, French, put all of my clips into a single category like a, it's called an audio lane. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on how to use roles in Apple Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 257. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.